for little spots for you to make different colors of of little I guess little lights so I did pink lights but then on top of it I put some little pink beads and I like how the door has a cute little wreath and let's see that one took me maybe five hours that one took me five hours uh, real quick I'm sorry YouTube changed the way they do live streams so we didn't go live on YouTube till this very moment so okay well let's start over yeah I'm sorry I thought we had gone live but there's a button we need to hit now so my apologies that was 100% me okay so do you want to just stop it and then restart uh we can just start from here because we're still going on Facebook okay so hi it is July 10th it is I'm Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop. We have been having a stitch along with Priscilla and Chelsea from Hands from Stitching with the Housewives. Sorry, um, I have to restart myself. Um, and we have been doing Jolly July, which is an ornament extravaganza, and we've been sewing an ornament each day. So I'm going to show you what I have done and how much each of them have taken me. So my very first item was this little Santa. The pattern is Christmas Cheer by Hands on Design. Heart and Hand, sorry. And so you can see this is the original pattern. This is my version of it. I changed it slightly. I didn't put the beads on the outside. Instead, I put the little beads on his little hat. And let's see, that one took me four and a half hours. So that was my first day. My second day was Fa La La. Nope, it was Holly Jolly by Heart and Hand, and this is from the Christmas Triplet pattern. And this is my design. This is the original pattern. This took me three hours, and I added little pink beads. I just used seed beads, added that to the top. This one took me about three hours. My next one was Fa La La, which is the same pattern. I had a little bit of difficulty with uh, the colors. So um, I redid this section quite a bit, but I ended up really liking it. And I put some little beads on the very center, center ornament. And that one took me about five and a half hours. And then the next one I really liked, this is the last one from the same pattern, so I love that I was able to use one pattern to get three ornaments. It is called Mary, and I made the little house red. In her pattern, she doesn't have you making the words in actual thread, but I went ahead and added that. And where she had little pink lights, I put beads on top of that. And this one took me about five hours. My next one is a big one. It is called Fa La La by Fa La 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 by Country Cottage Needleworks. And this one took me eight and a half hours. So this one took me quite a bit. Sorry. Yeah, okay, there you go. Quite a bit of time. Um, the color choices were not hard. It's just really big. And so I'm not really sure. This one is so big that I'm not sure how I'm gonna make it into an ornament. But I'm thinking it will be more of like the center of the tree with a big sign and maybe something really big around it so that it stands out because it is ginormous. So that is my sixth day. My next one was by Little House Needleworks. It is called 2016 Christmas Ornament. And this one also took me quite a bit. This took me seven and a half hours. And I had quite a bit of trouble figuring out colors, and so Priscilla helped me. She said, do either a white or aqua house, and so I ended up doing an aqua house. Um, and then this little outline here, I did in light brown. That kind of, I struggled with that a little bit. So that was Sundays. And then Mondays, we did a video on Monday telling you what we used and so this is called Dear Santa by Country Cottage Needleworks and on this one we bought a little wood board 
from Hobby Lobby and we painted it with picket fence chalky paint by Lori Holt and then we show we're gonna show on Friday how you can finish this into an ornament so this one is much less expensive because it's just a plain board you can even get it at probably Home Depot it's probably three-eighths of an inch it's not a quarter it's not a half just a little board and we painted it and this one took me seven and a half hours and then yesterday's I started working pretty late last night I worked on it from nine o'clock to ten o'clock so I didn't get very far this one is Merry Christmas pillow by Little House Needleworks it's from 2016 and so my plan is to do blue houses green trees a white snow and then on the border this is a pretty thick border so I might do it in blue I might do it in pink and if I do it in pink I'll leave it thick like that because the pink is really light if I do it in blue I would probably do a little bit fewer stitches just because that's really thick so that is where I am at now and let's see that one I've only spent an hour on so that's what I have so far for Jolly July do you want to zoom out? Mm -hmm. So that's what I have for Jolly July. Super, super, super exciting. Um, I'm glad that all of you are stitching along. The hashtag is FQS Jolly July, and it's been a lot of fun. And you can see that when I'm stitching them, it's between like three and seven hours. So when I get the ones that are like three hours, that's like so good because I can actually finish it that day. Um, but I, I have a lot done. And um, I am going to do the sleds for the very last week, which are just little initials. So that will really help me catch up because those won't take as long, I don't think. And so I can kind of, the things that I haven't finished, finished on that, on that day. And what I'm planning to do is at the very end, I'm going to wait till I finish all of the ornaments, all 31. And then I'm going to have a big party where I'm going to finish all of them with Denise and Lily's going to film it and we're going to see how many hours it takes to finish all of them because I feel like if I start and stop finishing I got a little um I had to film Friday's video yesterday and I got a lot of glue all over myself and I messed up a lot and Lily is going to have a hard time editing and I'm really sorry but I messed up the whole thing I'm really not good with finishing so I kind of decided after yesterday that I should probably do it all at once because once I kind of get in the rhythm, I do better, and I'm just not great at it, so kind of focusing my attention all at once and doing it might really help me get through it, rather than starting and stopping, and I also don't have, like, I don't really have a setup for finishing, um, so, you know, it's a lot to set up and then clean up, so I just figure I'm just going to, like, have a big party and bring in some Starbucks and finish mm. all 31. So thanks for joining me for that. And this week, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is a little project that I did. So, let's see. This is the original. This, let me show you the pattern. Sorry, pattern's in the other one. So the pattern is called Love My Stitching by Hands On Design and she worked with so much to love for the bag finishing. So I'm going to show you her design. So we sell the pattern and this is assembled where you stitch it and then fold it out and she even has a pocket in hers. And so this is the way they finish theirs. They have rick rack and they have a little fob on here. And I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to try to show you the difference between the two, so we'll probably have to. First, I'm going to show you. There, you go back in a little bit. There. Okay, so I'm going to show you the difference between what I did stitching and then I'm going to talk you through how I made my bag. So, the scissors I left the same. And when I did this, I kind of started in this corner and went from there and changed as I went. I didn't, I didn't say, okay, let me 
change all of this all at once. I just went step by step, which really helped me change it. So I did not do this little outside border. Uh, sorry, I didn't do the little stitches. I took that off. I did scissors. I did the scissors and the needle and the spool. But then on the linen, I, I just made it the words instead of outlined. I did the same thing on floss where I did the words not outlined. I made some cute little pink DMC. I did the hoop. I left this line off. I left the little embroidery hoop, left the buttons, and changed some colors. I did the sampler just the same. Now she has over here a tree because there's lots of trees in samplers. I decided to take that out and I just put a heart. So I took the heart she has here and put it here. Now I put the word motif, motif first and then centered the heart after. So I left motif the same. And then rickrack, she has a big rickrack all the way around. And I just did rickrack on the side and left rickrack. And then the pins, she has a little tomato pin cushion. Super cute. I just made mine pink and it doesn't really look like a tomato, but nobody's going to notice. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I don't know what it is. I just call it a strawberry, I guess. Pins. And I left the little tomato off. She has Ada here. And I just did the same thing, except I didn't outline it. And then I kind of got stuck and I thought, okay, I don't want to put Love My Stitching or Fob. She has fob here. And the reason why is I don't use scissor fobs. So I thought, well, what am I going to do? So I sat and got some graph paper that I just downloaded off the internet. And I just took the different letters. So I took the K from a different section of the pattern. So I took this K, this I, this M. I just drew all the letters out. And all of the letters in my name were in this pattern except for the Y. So I had trouble drawing my Y, so I went to an I went to all my Country Cottage Needleworks patterns and the May pattern had a Y, so I copied that Y. And then I put my name, lined up the very last line with my name and went backwards, and then I fit these scissors in. So I kind of just went from the top left to the bottom right, and I just had fun with it. And the reason I wanted to show you this was just to show you how you can take something that Kathy from Hands On Design did with her pattern, um, her bag maker, and you can make it totally your own. So now I'm going to walk you through what I did that's different. So her bag is beautiful, but I'm too scared to do a bag this way because she did it where... You make it outside, you flip it out, and then when you get to the top, this lines up evenly with your stitch, and I just was too scared to do that. So I took the same method I did with my whip stitch, my whip bag, which you can find the free video on our YouTube channel. Is it on our? It's on the quilting channel. It's on the quilting channel, so if you type that quarter shop whip bag, it'll mm -hmm. come up. Yes. And I'm going to walk you through kind of what I did. And um, I just want to be clear that I use the same exact measurements as So Much to Love. I was just too scared to do it her way because I'm not used to making bags. So I did it my way but kept it her design, just had to simplify it for me. So the first thing I did was I stitched all of my Ada. And then I ironed it. And then I took a lightweight fusible. The one that I used is PLF36. I ironed that to the back of my Ada. And then from there, I, I didn't have a double-sided lightweight fusible because you would want to use a lightweight, not a stiff. You don't want it to be too stiff. But you want it to be stiff enough so that this will not bend like Ada. So I put a lightweight on the back. And then I... Then I had that piece. Then what I did is I used the same measurement in the pattern here and the same measurement in the pattern here and I used some of Lori Holt's vintage trim in the cloud color. And they had their rickrack 
going towards the fabric and they have this line going across. And the real reason I didn't do this line is because I was too afraid that when I went to cut and put the bag together that it would be obvious that it didn't line up. So I instead made my rick rack go to the inside, which was super easy. I used the same technique I used with my vinyl on my whip bag. And I put these three pieces together. The bottom, the middle that has fusible on the back, lightweight fusible, and this, press them, and then I put a little pink top stitch on top that matches my fabric, so that keeps it nice and flat. And then I took a piece of fabric, I used the same fabric, put those together, this top stitch actually goes through to my back, and then I went ahead and added my zipper to the top and to my top piece. I also put some lightweight fusible in between these two pieces so that it would be a little bit stiffer. So then I've got two pieces and then I did my back the same exact way I did on my video with soft and stable because it makes it very fluffy. I just did a straight stitch with pink thread, probably a 3.0 stitch length and the same thread I used on the front. And then I just put the back and the front together and put binding on it. So I did the same exact technique I did with my whip bag. And the reason I did it this way is because it was really the only way I was comfortable with. And I used, of course, the By Annie zipper. So that is what I did. And so I thought this would just be a fun way to show you that you can totally get something and make it your own. And I was really scared to do it. I thought, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do it. So really, I just started in the top left, and I went item by item and just thought it through. And once you kind of start, you get more of a feel of how it looks, and then you can make a decision. Like here, I wasn't sure if I was going to do the tree, so I thought, well, let me do this and this, and then go back and do this. So you can just do the parts you really know you love, and then go back, and you can make it your own. And I want to thank Kathy for sharing this bag with me. And obviously to make it, you have to have her pattern. And I thought that was super cute. So I thought I would show that to you guys because I just made that for fun. And what I used, I used the pewter color, which is darker than the graceful gray. I used 14 count. If you wanted your bag to be a little bit smaller, you could do 16 count. If you wanted your bag to be bigger, you could do 18 count. And I picked this DMC. Let's see, I used 336, 3716, and Blanc, which is basically white, and I just used three threads. And this fabric is Riley Blake fabric. And I love pink and navy, so that's what I used. And that took me to make all of it. Let's see how long that took me. It took me 12 hours to do the stitching and it took me about three and a half hours to put it into a bag. And I don't think at home it would really take y'all three and a half hours. When I make a bag I go really slow because I am not a sewist. I'm more of a quilter and so I really have to think things through and then I'll have my pencil and my notes and I make myself notes because I'm always so nervous that I'm going to mess up. So I really take my time because I just don't know how to make bags. And I wish I could have made my bag just like Kathy and So Much To Love did. I was just too scared when I read the instructions. I thought, oh, my math is not gonna work. So there's that. And we have something new. I'm so excited. So this is Lori Holt's brand new pattern. And a couple months ago on the live stream, we introduced her new bag, which is her take along project bag and it says eat sleep stitch repeat and somebody said oh can you make me a cross stitch with it so we thought okay yeah so we did so Lori made this and she picked the colors it's just five colors she used her white 10 count daisy which will be in stock very soon we're at July 10th it's supposed to come in in the next two weeks and then we have some new frames that we had made for Lori this is the 8 inch medium frame and she painted it so that it would match her stitching. So if you type 
vintage frame on our site you'll see the three frames that she did and she painted it with this color which is watering can and next week what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have some fun I'm gonna basically take this pattern let me show you the pattern and everything before I keep telling you what I'm gonna do because <laughs> I'm getting all creative so um, this is her brand new pattern it came out yesterday we finished it yesterday it is a lower price pattern. It's very simple. She made this very quick. We show the Aura Floss colors and the DMC colors. And we have a DMC pack. These are the same colors she uses in her Aura Floss box. And a lot of these colors she's used before. So you might not even need to buy floss because these are flosses she's already used before. So this is her brand new pattern. So what I'm going to do is next week we're going to stitch this and I am going to come up with lots of different options. I'm going to, not in terms of kits, but just more in terms of creativity because I always want you to be thinking about what you can do to make it your own. You don't always have to go into a store and buy exactly the way it is. You don't have to buy it from Fat Quarter Shop and buy the thread kit and buy everything exactly like it. You want to make it your own. So I'm going to have some fun picking out different fabrics that you could stitch it on, different threads, like maybe a modern version, maybe a reproduction version, maybe like a pastel version, just different versions, and just kind of show you how you can step outside the box, how it might look on, you know, white, navy, gray, red, whatever, black, um, so that's going to be a lot of fun because I'm going to have fun picking out different things. And then I'm going to pick something that I'm going to stitch. I was kind of thinking I might go along the version of this so that they stitch, so that they look, this, you know, similar. And I might use 16 count so that mine is super tiny because hers, hers is on 10 count. Just to show you that when you buy something, you don't have to do exactly what's on there. You can make your own. And Lori actually loves it when people make it their own. Um, she's never insulted. She never, you know, she always likes that. So you, sh you should never worry if you're posting something on Instagram. She loves to see the different things that all of you guys make. And we're super excited that Lori works with us and lets us publish her patterns. We're super honored that we are the ones that are able to do that. And she also sent another one that's coming out soon. And it is so cute. I can't show it to you, but it's like over there. And it is so cute. I don't think Lily's seen it. So I like, seen it. it's really cute. It's um, really cute, guys. Yeah, there's actually two new ones. One of them I made last year. Um, so they're sitting over there. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so those are going to be I'm super excited. cute. And then I'm going to show you some other things that um, we have been working on here. So. So one thing we've been working on is the Chalkful, which is Priscilla Blaine's pattern with hands-on design. This is her pattern. It's called Harvest Chalkful. And of course, here we're having fun stitching it and showing you different ways you can do it. So this was made by Cheryl on 32 count. So you're going to see that it's much smaller than our versions that Denise and I made. And it looks great with, this is she didn't stitch on Venetian stone. She used a different fabric. But if you wanted to, this is something similar. And I think it's great to show you how it looks great on smaller. And she is putting the word Mason in a brown color. So she's introduced a taupe color down here. So that is Cheryl's version. This is Denise's version. So Denise is a member of our Chalkful Club. And she started at the top and she's moving down. And I think it's really also very interesting. I always love to see how people do things and how minds work. And so it's interesting how we're all kind of starting at the top and going down, all three of us. This is my version. So I worked on it about two hours this week and my goal is to do all of the white. And then I'm gonna come back and do all the yellow all the brown and all the green and I'm super excited about what I'm gonna do with this because I have no idea I don't know where it's gonna go I don't know how I'm gonna finish it 
But I think it's super awesome to see that, again, look at the difference here. So amazing what you can do with different fabric and different colors. So there's that. Cheryl also has been working on some other stuff because she's amazing. So this is super cute. Oh my gosh, Lily's going to die. Okay, this is called <laughs> Snowman Trio. I don't know if this is a new, but look at how detailed that is. It is so tiny. If you think about how... So this is Belfast 32 count. What's the color? Platinum. Platinum. So that's what she stitched it on. And it is so cute. And I, I think it's cute. So there's her first one that she did. Her next one are the super popular birds by Heart and Hand. She has like lots of different ones. So they're called Wee Ones. This is Summer Bird. I know. Okay, so this is Water Lily. 28 count linen. And this is a bead. This is, sorry, a bead. It's not a bead. It's a button. So this is a, just another button company, and we will be ordering this button and we will have all these buttons in stock in a week. And I don't know what she's gonna do with it, but I bet she finishes it super cute. Super cute. And then she has another Wee One Stitching Bird. They're all called Wee One Stitching Birds, and this one is a Stitching Bird. Look at it, it's so cute. And then this is a cute little button. And in her pattern, I'm gonna look one thing, if you don't, in her pattern, this will just be empty if you don't put the button on. So we will get all of these buttons in stock. So there is all of Cheryl's beautiful work. And then, I have some new patterns. So Shannon Christine Designs, I believe she's new, and she had a group called Pumpkin, Pumpkin Farm, and it's a three-part series. So you would, you would piece one, two, three and it was super popular so this is sorry i cannot get myself straight gingerbread house one and this just came in yesterday and these are brand new and then gingerbread house two so when you stitch them technically you could stitch them right together or individually and then this is stitch gingerbread house three. Oh, okay so this is how yes perfect so duh this is a better way to show it so so you can do them individually or together. And it's got a little bit of back stitching, but you can leave it off if you want. So those are new and we're gonna be carrying more of her stuff because her stuff has been flying out the door. Another new one we got is this one. Poppy Popper Starlight Star Bright. Since we're doing a lot of Christmas, I thought this could be a cute Christmas ornament. And then we had a request from one of our customers called customer service and wanted this hard and hand pattern, which is an older pattern. And I think it's for a wedding. And so we carried it for her. So just remember that if you have questions and you want us to carry something, you can always reach out and we're, if we're able to get it, we will. So guys, that's what I have today. A ton of stuff. I'm happy to answer. Oh, I'm not done. So we also have... Oh my goodness. I kind of hinted to this, but we have a Ronnie needle minder. Minder. I know it's not mender, but I call them menders. But this is a Ronnie needle minder, mender, whatever. Minder. And he is Priscilla's dog. And she? She. Oh my gosh, sorry. So this is Priscilla's dog. But I can't leave Piggy out. So Piggy, I don't have his packaging, but listen to little Piggy. Oh. It's a little Piggy. We can play together. They're a little Piggy, 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 Piggy. <laughs> I love my dog. Can you tell? <laughs> I love my dog. Yeah, I love Piggy. Oh my gosh. I know. And so I found a new place. I did find a new place for my dog to go. That's right by the house. And they love Piggy, and oh my gosh, when he gets there, he like tries to jump in their arms, and it's so wonderful to have a place that he can go because it's really hot in Texas. And um, 
he pees in the house, so he can't stay in the house by himself. He's not one of those dogs that you can just, like, leave in the house, so, um, and he acts better when he goes there. I did go to Branson last week, and I got to go to two wonderful shops. I went to Cecilia Samplers, which is a cross-stitch store. I went with Emma, and I was really excited. They had Lori Holt's book stand, and they had some of our stash in stores. So I was super excited to see that. And I went there because we are sold out of Classic Colorworks Bamboo, and we're waiting for um, them to be dyed to get more. And I need some, and they didn't have any, and I was, like, going to cry because I was like, oh, for sure, they're going to have it. Um, but they had a really cute Christmas tree, and they had the sleds, and um, I just kind of just used inspiration, just looked at kind of what they have. Um, they had some older stuff I hadn't seen before, so that was really nice. And then I went, there was another store. It's called Quilt and Quilts, I believe. It was a wonderful quilt shop. It was also in Branson. It was like a mile away. And it was beautiful and they had so many knickknacks and they had some It's So Emma books and some notions. And so I made Emma, cause she's the company named after her. Um, and that company was started before I ever had my boys. So they will eventually get something named after them. Um, but we had fun. Um, they had a lot of gifts in there. They had like a lot of knickknacks, like a lot of like, tied sticks and just little gifty things and bracelets and oh my gosh we were in there for like I don't know 45 minutes it was really great and so it was fun to go to another city we don't have a lot of things in Austin like we don't have a store I would go to mm -hmm. here for any of those things so it was fun to just go and see that and um, we had a great time I got home Monday late but I can tell you that um, six days out of town is a long time and so I'm very happy to be home. Okay, I'll start with a comment from Lori Holt. She says, Kimberly, I love, love, love the many fashion store. Oh, thanks. Okay, so these are new. They come in a lot of colors, and I have them. Oh, show me the one on my desk. Hand me that one. No, the other one. Wait, the, that one, the yeah, normal one? yeah, okay. the normal one. So this is the one that I. This is how I use my normal fashion store, and. Um, now I have the mini one, so I can keep my, when I'm stitching, I can keep, like, my stitchy stuff there, and, um, yeah, that's how I keep my pencils. But, yeah, they're brand new. They're super cute, and um, we added purple, and people are going nuts over purple. I'm like, y'all need to calm purple. down about purple. Purple, I, I couldn't believe it. Purple's the best. I just want to say that. Lily's uh, going to buy it. All the purple. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, uh, lots of people were curious to know where you got your shirt. Okay. I am a member of this program called Trump Club, and they send you clothes every month, and you can decide what you want to keep and what you want to send back. So I got it in Trump Club like two or three months ago. Yeah, that's through Nordstrom, right? It's through Nordstrom. Okay. Uh -huh. And you can tell them, like, price ranges. So, like, don't think, like, okay, Nordstrom, you have to spend $300. You can say, like, I only want things under $50. I only want jewelry. I only want, ma like, they will send you anything. Um, but you can do a price range, so don't feel like if you wanted to do that, like it's all expensive because it's not. Uh, from Lisa Bordani, she says, Good morning, when will the Floss Fix Club start shipping? August 7th. So it will be on the 7th of each month, beginning in August, and our first color is Pinky Pink, named after Pinky. I should put, look, I should do this. This will drive Kevin crazy. Look, I will wear a Pinky. All day. Oh. Just to bug Kevin, that'll bug him. Oh, he wait. goes with the shirt too. I know. Piggy. Right, uh, from Gigi Bugrin, uh, not really related question, but which cordless iron does Kim really use? Not the mini one. I think she means Panasonic. Okay, so the Panasonic iron I use on the set, and I would use, that means our film set. And I would use that at a retreat. At home, I use the yellow Oliso iron. That is all I use. I also really like, um, we have a really powerful one, but it's way too, it's like huge, and it would be too big for my house. But that one really gets creases out. Um, but I do like Oliso. Mm -hmm. okay. Stacy Fallon says, I love Kim Riley's color changes. Are the fabric and floss color changes posted in her blog, referring to the Jolly July stuff? Okay. Yes. And each video I talk about it. So basically, on Jolly July, the main colors I used, well, the, the fabric is Wichell 14 Count Graceful Gray. 
The colors I used are bamboo, which we are sold out of, but we're getting more. Really tealy. Pink posy. Pink posy. Four leaf clover. And then some of the time I used holly jolly. And then the red is cherry tomato. So those are the main colors I used. And then if I needed brown, I used gingerbread. Uh, from Marsha McGuire, uh, Lily, could you ask Kimberly to explain the world of Ada to various companies, uh, as in Zweigart, which helped get this fabric and work their magic on it, and what company is the Cadillac of Ada today? Um, her question. <laughs> so on Ada, I prefer my Ada to be stiff, but not crunchy. I'm using the words that Chelsea Carter came up with, so <laughs> I'm going to give her credit because it was a hard thing to explain, and when I heard her say it, it made a lot of sense. So DMC seems to be crunchy, super thick. I prefer to use Wichelt. That's my brand. That's my, and I like them because they have a lot of colors. I also really like Zweigart. They have a lot of colors. So those are the two that I like the best. I would say, you know, Ada is Ada. I don't think that it's, um, I don't think it's like a car where, like, there's a Land Rover and there's a Kia. I don't think that. I think it's just all very similar, very um, very similar. To me it's all about color and you can get some really beautiful stuff from Picture This Plus which is hand dyed and then the other company Stephanie, Stephanie, Fabrics, by Stephanie Fabrics by Stephanie and they have like hand dyed stuff that is super expensive and beautiful so I mean you can go all the way from like white to like crazy. Um, but I just, I don't know. I'm not too, I'm not too elitist with Ada, I guess. I'm pretty boring, simple. I'm a Kia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it, I'm saying it because Denise drives a Kia. And uh, she likes simple. Okay, uh, Jean Purvis, she says, hi from NC. I still haven't received my harvest kit and, had, and was signed up. Thought Kimberly said you were shipping last Monday. Any update? It did ship. So email Janelle at fatquartershop.com and she can see what happened. It could be uh, different things. It could be a PayPal invoice. It could be credit card issue. It could be an address thing. It could be anything. So email her. She will answer you right away. Uh, and as I've been doing, I think this is my favorite comment from this live stream. Jana Gorsuch said, I'm so excited that I got into the Chalk Full Club. My husband even suggested we purchase some vintage mason jars recently, you know, to go with my Chalk Full stitchery. I know, it's so cute. So when I was in Branson, we stayed at this hotel that was part of the convention center, and on one side is all new stores. So, like, Francesca's, The Loft, Brighton, all that stuff. And then on the other side of the hotel was, like, flea markets so I went because I love that kind of stuff like I love mason jars and all that stuff and I looked at some prices and I was like yeah this is not really a flea market let's leave <laughs> because everything was like super geared towards I guess um, tourists and it was really expensive so I was like this is not a real flea market let's go yeah I had to leave I was like no I did find a five and dime right by this hotel that had DMC and I was super impressed and Emma was like look it's your aisle <laughs> I was like yes it is we should leave before I buy a bunch of DMC oh that's great she knows <laughs> uh, uh, raw patent says what color did Cheryl stitch chalk full on it's not Venetian stone dark cobblestone dark cobblestone right. and the brand I don't know it's just 32 count Lugana that's 32 right. count Lugana and we might not have it. Um, she has a great collection. Um, she has probably this high of just fabrics. Um, yeah, I think in an upcoming video, she talks about how she stores, she stores it. it and she has a lot of different storage bins for it. So she's got yes. a lot. Yes, and we'll be adding more colors as we, as we grow. Candy Kerr says, thanks for the tutorial for the needle guide. Can it be used to measure how long your stitch line would be? Example, I need 45 stitches. Could I use it to count, can I use it to count, keep track of how many stitches I have? I think she means the stitch gauge video we released. Um, so you could, I'm going to show you what I like to do. 
that I think might work better because I tried that and couldn't get it to work. So give me a second. Okay. I'm going to show you a little tip that I think would work. So you could use your ruler or your stitch gauge and I've tried that and it's really hard. So what I'll do is I'll take a second needle and I'll count and say that's 20. I'll count it. I put my little needle in. I'll count it. Let me get it in straight so it makes sense. So like if I have like 40 stitches to go, I'll just count, put my needle in, I'll make sure it's right, and then I'll use another needle and just stitch all the way till I get there, and I've only had to count twice. So I do that instead of the stitch gauge because I get too confused with the stitch gauge. So that's kind of one thing that I have found that works. And so like if I'm doing a banner at the top, you know, a lot of Country Cottage Needleworks have these brown banners with little circles on the end. I'll do one end and then start and then I'll count all the way over, stick my needle in and then just stitch and then go back. So that I have found that to work a little bit better, but you could use the stitch gauge. I think I get a little too confused, but I, I think you can do it. I just think I'm a little, um, it's quicker for me, I guess, to do the count. And I got that idea off Reddit. Um, so. Uh, Michigan Gal 001 says, how many threads for DMC, classic color works, and floss for cross stitch? Which I think the stitch gauge has those numbers. So if you go to the stitch gauge video on the Fat Quarter Shop floss tube, we talk about that and we have a tool. It's in this room somewhere. It's in my bag, a bag of bags, because I have like five bags over there. You want to see my bags? No. <laughs> um, I, I literally have like bags of bags. Here, I'll get it. There are a lot of bags. <laughs> yeah, there are like bags. This is how I go every day. So it's like bags of bags of bags. So, and phone chargers and car chargers. So in one of these bags, right here, is the stitch gauge. And I talk about it on the video and the stitch gauge will tell you how many threads you can use and I explain all of that in depth on that video that has already been released. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to do it again because if I do it I might mess it up. Um, but yeah, that came out yesterday on the boss tube, so it's yes! the most recent video on there yes. for this one. Okay, Janet Smith says, when will you get the Bamboo Classic Color Works in? We think in about two weeks. Um, all the distributors are out, Diane is out, and Diane was dyeing them two weeks ago. They were being carded last week, which means they dye them, and then they send them out to people to put on the cards because it's pre-cut and wound. So once it comes back from the carders, we have tons ordered. Uh, okay. Annie Shaw says, just joining, can we get the chart for the cross-stitch wording that you showed last week on a project bag? I love my stitching. Is it that one? Mm -hmm. This one, um, this is Love My Stitching and we have a lot in stock. If this is what you're talking about, um, I think it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it is. I hope. Yeah, it's called Love My Stitching. Okay. Uh, and the last comment, just because I appreciated this comment, uh, just stuck, you said, it's amazing how you remember all the products. Oh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I have somebody oh. behind the camera helping me. It's, you know, when I stitch with stuff, I can remember it really well. If I don't stitch with it, I get confused. But today's a really good day. I'm on it today. I'm pumped. I'm so excited to be, guys, I'm so excited to be home and working and back home that I can't even tell you how, um, how excited I am to be home. Yes, it is so good. I miss my kids. I miss my dog. I mean, Emma was with me, but I mean, my boys want to go, but there's just no way. Like, she would dance. Like, it takes like two hours to get ready. You gotta get, you gotta get ready. And she does that all herself. Great. She gets up on her own. She gets ready. Then you gotta go downstairs an hour and ahead. And then you gotta practice. And then you gotta get on stage. And then you gotta get off stage. And then you gotta eat. And then you gotta, I mean, it's just like an all day thing. My boys would go nuts. Um, they would have hated it. Um, cause we had thought about Kevin coming and bringing the boys and it just would have been too much. It was just kind of like a long drawn out thing. It was six days and, um, it was great. It's just, I don't really want to be anywhere for six days. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and then last thing here, we have a request from Anna Sendejas. She says, could you please carry Erica Michael's strawberry patterns like Scary Berry? They are so cute. Thanks. Sure. 
I don't know what that is, but Denise will look it up. <laughs> but yes, I don't know. Um, I'm not familiar with that, but sure we can. So guys, thanks for watching. I love that you spent your day with me. I hope that I am giving you ideas and helping you step outside your box because that's one thing that's really hard for me is to step outside my comfort zone. And any like one thing about life is some people really don't like change. And I'm one of those people, I don't like change. So one of my goals for 2019 is to be more adaptable to change. And one of the ways that I'm working on that is through my stitching and my quilting and kind of making things my own and not following a pattern and not, not following it exactly and just making it your own. So I hope that you at home can make it your own.